What if Naruto met Hagoromo when he was a child and got the sun and moon seal? In this what if, Minato is half Uchiha and Fugaku's cousin. Before Naruto is born, Hagoromo appears before him and explains that he is a child with limitless potential and has been granted great power. He explains to Naruto that his power must be used for good and no matter what happens, he must always choose the path of good. He then says his time is up and they might never meet again and says goodbye. The events of the Nine Tails attack goes the same as in canon. Minato and Kushin are dying, however, Naruto in this series gets the full Nine Tails. At age three, Naruto is able to run, talk, and infuse chakra. He goes to the Hokage's office and asks Hiruzen for some chakra paper to see what chakra in nature he has. And Hiruzen says, okay, but only one Naruto. Naruto replies, that's fine, I only need one. He then infuses chakra and transfers it into the chakra paper. The chakra paper does something strange. It splits in one place, gets wet next to it. Next to that, it shrivels, it crumbles below that, and to the left of that, it burns. Naruto then says to Hiruzen, that means I have all five chakra natures, right? Hiruzen with a shocked expression is silent for a few seconds before he composes himself and replies, yes, that's right. He then asks, but how are you able to use chakra? You're only three and a half. Naruto replies with, well, I've been able to do it for about a week now. When I tried it, it just worked. Hiruzen nods his head in acknowledgement. Naruto then thanks him and leaves. The next day, Naruto goes to his usual training grounds and trains his physical strength. He then remembers, now that he confused Trucker, he tries to master the normal clone jutsu. On his first try, he manages to make one clone, but then disappears after 10 seconds. Naruto then seems disappointed. He then remembers he has to train hard in order to use his power for good, just like the floating man he'd met before, this being the Sage of Six Paths. He then carried on training for another two and a half hours and masters using one clone. He then sets himself the goal of being able to use five clones in two weeks. Naruto leaves the training grounds and walks into the village. Even though he is only three years old, villagers constantly shout insults at him or treat him as if he doesn't exist. He wonders to himself, why does everybody hate him so much? However, he then remembers the Sage of Six Paths telling him that he has to walk, walk the path of good, no matter what. He makes his way to the library and he picks up six books containing simple jutsu of each chakra nature as well as one on the clone jutsu and genjutsu. He then brings the books up to the librarian and they say, just keep them and get out of my sight. Naruto just takes the books and leaves as he is used to the treatment now. He then gets back to his house and puts them on his desk. He then sleeps to get a good night rest. Two weeks later, Naruto is back at the training grounds and does his usual physical training, which contains 300 push ups, 300 sit ups, 200 pull ups, and 50 laps, the 400 meter track he marked out. After he masters the transformation due to after, he then does the clone jutsu and has outdone his expectations. He can perform 10 clones at once and they don't disappear until he wants them to. From the books he got in the library, he learned water style, raging waves, wind style, zephyr, fire style, flame bullet, earth style, mud wall, and lightning style, lightning hand. He has mastered these jutsu and can use them in short time frames. He also learned a couple genjutsu techniques, including full surroundings and sly mind effect, which causes an enemy to lose their sense of direction. Naruto then went to the third Hokage and asks if he could teach him any hard jutsu, as he has learned all the jutsu he could find at the library. Hiruzen asks Naruto to wait a minute. Hiruzen leaves the room. Naruto waits patiently for Hiruzen to come back. When he finally returns, he is holding a large scroll and a smaller scroll. He tells Naruto to pick five juicy from this scroll and to record it on the scroll he has just given. He begins to read through the scroll and with one hour, he picks five juicy and thanks Hiruzen for allowing him to learn new juicy. Hiruzen replies, that's fine Naruto, learn well and don't do anything dangerous. Now Naruto is walking through the village. He walks past the store where a really nice katana is and the store owner spots him looking at it. 
He shouts at Naruto, throwing the sword at him, saying, That's what you want, right? Now get away from my stool. Naruto takes the sword home. When he gets home, he realises that the sword is too big for him to use right now. He sighs, thinking that he will be able to use it when he gets big enough. This is part two of what if Naruto got the Sun and Moon Seal as a child. We left off with Naruto getting a katana, or rather, getting one thrown at him. We cut to Naruto turning four years old. Naruto is sleeping, then he awakes in a dark place. He sees a giant beast behind him in a cage. Naruto hesitatingly finally says to the beast, Hello. The beast replies, What are you doing here, Naruto? Naruto then says, I'm sorry, I just appeared here. I didn't mean to disturb you. But how do you know my name? The beast laughs and says, I'm sealed inside of you. I know everything about you. Naruto then says, So, you can always see me, but I can never see you. The be beast replies, Yes. Naruto then asks, So then, you may know the reason why no one likes me. Would you like to be my friend? The beast chuckles and says, Me? Your friend? Why would I do that? Naruto replies, Well, if you are sealed inside of me, that means you haven't talked to anyone for four years. It must be lonely. The beast is silent for a moment and then says, What if I told you I'm the reason everyone hates you? What if I told you that I'm the nine-tailed fox? Naruto then quickly replies, I don't care about that. You can always change. And that means you're in a similar situation than me. Because everyone hates you too then. The beast replies, I suppose you're right. I am Kuruma, the nine-tailed fox. Naruto then says, nice to meet you Kuruma. Kuruma makes Naruto know that they are not friends, they are just acquainted. Naruto nods, then says, goodbye Kuruma, I'll talk to you later. Naruto then wakes up to a knock on his door. Naruto gets up and says, come in. The third Hokage walks into the room and wishes Naruto a happy birthday. Naruto then says thanks and asks Hiruzen why he didn't tell him that he had the nine-tailed fox inside of him. Hiruzen replies, so you found out. Naruto nods his head. Hiruzen says, it's because I thought it would be too much for you to take in. Naruto nods once more. Hiruzen says sorry to Naruto and Naruto reminded Hiruzen that he was just looking after him. Hiruzen thanks Naruto for understanding as he leaves. Half a year later, Naruto is going to his training grounds. As he arrives, he noticed someone's there. They were extremely skilled and looked to be around 11. Naruto watches as he hit all the targets at once. He is then noticed by the person who asks who's there. Naruto then walks out and says, I'm sorry, it's just you're in my training place. The boy says, I see, I was wondering who made this nice little training ground. He then says he'll leave now. And then he says, wait, you want Naruto a Chiho, right? Naruto nods. The boy then says, nice to meet you, I'm in touch with Chiho. Naruto widens his eyes, not because he was also in a Chiho, but because he didn't treat him like dirt. Naruto asks Itachi why he isn't treating him like dirt, and says he has a nine-tailed fox inside of him. Itachi says, I know, but that doesn't mean you are the nine-tails, right? Naruto nods as a tear forms in his left eye. He quickly wipes it and thanks Itachi for acknowledging him for who he is. Itachi says, don't worry about it. I have a feeling we'll be seeing more of each other as he walks off. Naruto then pulls out a scroll and is determined to master the second one of his jutsu today. He first does the jutsu he already learned, the fire style flame dragon jutsu. He then prepares for the next jutsu. He thinks he can finally do it, and he tries it, and succeeds. Earth Star, Dark Swamp. Although only four and a half at this point in the series, he has two times the amount of chakra than the Naruto in Shippuden. After a long day, Naruto goes to the Hokage's office, and before he enters he hears a lot of voices. They seem to be talking about a coup d'etat. The Uchiha seem to be plotting one. One says that they feel like they are exiled and aren't valued by the village, and the third says we need a way to fix it. One says they will put the clan under a Genjutsu to stop it, another says no. 
The third Hokage speaks once again. And he has to think of a plan, quick. Naruto, in this timeline, has incredible intellect and is comparable to the Hokages. And using this intellect, he walks into the office and says, I have a solution. The two people in the room are the two elders, the third Hokage, Danzo and Shisui. Danzo snaps at Naruto, telling him to go away. Huzun asks Danzo to hear him out. Naruto begins explaining, The Uchiha feel like they aren't valued. This means they lack responsibility. I believe this is because they have been moved to the outskirts of the village. They must feel as if they have been exiled. Danzo shouts at Naruto, What has this got to do with it? Naruto replies, If you have the patience, I will get to it, Danzo. He then continues, if they lack responsibility, give them responsibility. Make them a valuable asset to the leaf. You need to entrust them with something the leaf cannot do without. Hiruzen and Shisui butt in and say, But what could we give? Shisui carries on saying, This is the problem. There isn't much that can be given to my clan. Naruto then tells Shisui, There is one thing. Hiruzen says, What is it, Naruto? This could be extremely important. Naruto then says, me. Danzo then says, don't be ridiculous. Hiruzen is silent for a moment. Naruto carries on. You need to trust me. The Uchiha want a coup d'etat. And if you want to avoid this, entrust the village's Jinchuriki to them. I'm also in the Uchiha, even though I most likely still won't be accepted there. If you trust the Uchiha, hand them over to me. Hiruzen and the two elders agree, but Danzo doesn't. However, he is overwhelmed, so the meeting is scheduled with Fugaku. The day of the meeting comes, and Fugaku and Hiruzen sit down in the Hokage's office. Hiruzen tells Fugaku that they know they are planning a coup, and they'd like to stop it. Fugaku responds to Hiruzen, saying, They have almost been exiled from the village, and the village is scared of their power. Hiruzen says, what would you say if we were to entrust a vital asset of the leaf to you, to show how much we trust in you? Fugaku says he would never do that. Hiruzen then says, come in. The door opens and Naruto walks in. Fugaku's eyes open wide as he watches the Nine Tails Jinchuriki walk into the room. Hiruzen says to Fugaku, we are entrusting you with our most powerful asset, Naruto Uchiha. Fugaku says, I understand the trust that you are willing to put into us and we will gladly accept the offer. This is part three of what if Naruto got the sun and moon seal as a child. After the meeting with Hiruzen, Naruto is brought to the Uchiha compound and an immediate meeting is called by Fugaku. Fugaku tells Naruto to go into the room and don't come out until he says so. Naruto nods. The meeting starts and Fugaku explains it will be a quick one. He says the coup is off Angry yells are heard throughout the room. Fugaku says, quiet down, our prayers have been answered. The village has put immense trust in our clan. Silence fills the room. Fugaku says, come in, and Naruto walks through the door and jaws drop. Fugaku explains that the, the Jinchuriki has been entrusted to the Ichiga clan, and that the responsibility is all they wanted. Choosing the compound are heard, as I celebrate being valued. Fugaku then says, Now, I want everyone to treat Naruto with respect. He isn't the Nine Tails. The Nine Tails is sealed inside of him. He is actually doing good for everyone. Everyone then looks at Naruto. Naruto then says to the Uchiha clan, The Nine Tails didn't attack the village on its own accord. Everyone stares at him. The Nine Tails is under a Genjutsu from a man with a Rinnegan. Everybody looks at him with shock. Naruto then says, don't resent the Nine Tails, but the man with the Rinnegan. Everybody then talks amongst themselves. Fugaku then dismisses them all. They then flow outside of the main hall. Fugaku then says, Naruto, did you mean what you said? Naruto then nodded and said, There was a bit of lie in there, because the man did actually have a Sharingan, not the Rinnegan. He was working with a man with a Rinnegan though. Fugaku then asks Naruto why he lied. Naruto replies, I haven't told the Hokage yet about this, but it's because the Uchiha may believe that the village thinks they have done it. 
Fugaku nods and says to Naruto, You're a sharp kid. Naruto thanks him. One week later, Fugaku checks up on Naruto, and Naruto is reading books on chakra and the history of it. Naruto then notices Fugaku is in his room and says, Hello, sir. Fugaku returns a reading. Naruto asks Fugaku to teach him the fireball jutsu. Fugaku complies and takes him to a large lake and shows Naruto the hand signs and performs the jutsu. Naruto copies and releases a huge fireball attack, almost as big as Fugaku's. Fugaku is shocked and congratulates Naruto, thinking he is just like Itachi. Naruto thanks him, and then Naruto says he has to go back and train. Now, Fugaku says goodbye. We skip to when Naruto is five years old and starting the academy. Naruto has met Sasuke a couple times, so when they are in the same class, Sasuke goes over to Naruto to greet him. Unlike Sasuke, Naruto has white hair, so people don't usually know he's an Uchiha. Class starts, and Naruto and Sasuke study together. Naruto realizes he can graduate now if he wants to, but he really wants to be on the same team as Sasuke. So he stays in the academy, practicing every day after school. Naruto explains to Fugaku, and asks Fugaku if he knows how the teams are formed. Fugaku explains it. Naruto then knows what he has to do. He explains his plan to Sasuke, and Sasuke agrees. Naruto gets the lowest scores, and Sasuke gets the highest scores. We skip three years. Naruto has learnt the Shadow Clone Jutsu, as well as the last three Jutsus in his scroll. Fire Star, Majestic Destroyer Flame, the Flying Thunder God, and the Eight Trigram Seal. Naruto starts to leave a Shadow Clone in school. Whilst that Shadow Clone is in school, Naruto decides to visit the Hokage the Hokage's office at one point. As he goes into the Hokage's office, the Hokage asks him, why is he in school? Naruto says that he's left a shadow clone there. Here's an asks why he doesn't just graduate. Naruto then says he wants to be on the same team as Sasuke. Here's a nods. Naruto says he has mastered all five of the Jutsu he was allowed to have, and he returns the scroll to Hiruzen. Here's an asks if he's allowed to see what he learns. Naruto then opens up the scroll for him, his eyes widen, and he asks Naruto if he actually mastered them. Naruto then says yes in confusion and asks why he's surprised, and Hiruzen whispers to him, you are at least Jonin level, possibly strong, as strong as a high ranking Anbu. Naruto thanks Hiruzen for the praise and says Hiruzen can watch him use one of the techniques now. He just vanishes, and Hiruzen knows this is the Flying Thunder God technique. The next day, he sends another clone to school and says he will now train himself more heavily, more heavily on physical attributes, such as speed and strength. He trains for five hours a day in physical activities and two hours in ninjutsu and genjutsu. He does this every day for two years. Naruto is now 10 years old and he now rivals heroes in, in battle. He isn't as strong, but he'd do a decent amount of damage. He now wants to train with a sword that he got all those years ago. For one year he trains using this sword and putting all types of nature tracker into it. Naruto's style was fluid as he could easily slice apart boulders. Naruto would also train with Sasuke concealing a lot of strength but one day Naruto draws Sasuke's blood. This makes Naruto panic. He rushes over to Sasuke to see he has awakened his Sharingan. Naruto tells Sasuke the good news. One more year passes, and they are about to graduate. Naruto is working on a new Jutsu, which he knows will be his most powerful Jutsu when he masters it. Naruto is now on par, maybe a little stronger than the older Hiruzen, and Sasuke has a dual two-tomoe Sharingan. The teams get announced, and it went exactly the same as in canon, due to the plan. The Hokage congratulates all the Academy students, shaking their hand. When Hiruzen shakes Naruto's hand, he whispers to him, it all went according to your plan, didn't it? Naruto nods. Hiruzen also didn't notice Naruto had placed a small seal on his hand. Fast forward. All the teams meet their sensei. And team 7, consisting of Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto, sit waiting. Naruto asks Sak Sakura what her skills are. And Sakura replies with, shut up Naruto, why would I talk to you? I only want to talk to Sasuke. Naruto says, just answer the question, we're going to be on the same team. Sakura says, Sasuke, should I? Sasuke glares at Sakura and says, 
don't really call Naruto when you are less useful than him. Naruto, tell her what you told me. Naruto then says to Sakura, Sakura, no matter what team you're on, each person has strengths and weaknesses. Your teammates will make up for your weaknesses. And only when that happens do you become a, two, a true team. In this world, it's either a whole team or no one. Sakura then looks down, ashamed. An hour passes by, and Kakashi finally walks into the room and asks what everyone is talking about. Naruto replies, Nothing important, Sensei. We look forward to working with you. Kakashi ignores Naruto and says, Come up to the rooftop. The introductions take place, and in this timeline, Sasuke goes first. He says, He likes training and doesn't dislike much, and his dream is to become a strong shinobi, just, just like his brother. Sakura's in introduction is the same. Naruto then introduces himself, says, He likes studying juices and learning about shinobi history. He then says, I dislike someone who doesn't respect everyone and values themselves over comrades. Kakashi then stares at Naruto for around 10 seconds before doing his normal, boring introduction. He then instructs Team 7 not to eat breakfast tomorrow or they will puke and to meet in the training area. The next day, everyone meets at the training grounds and Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura discuss their weaknesses and strengths. Naruto asks Sakura if she can fight in close quarters. She says she's average, Naruto then says he can do a few long range jutsu and a few short range jutsu, but not naming them. Just as usual, Kakashi arrives late, just before Naruto could tell everyone what the jutsu were. Kakashi explained the bell test and then said start. Team 7 then scattered. They all met up in a group and Naruto explains the plan. Sasuke and Sakura come out of the forest and Sakura runs at Kakashi, kunai in hand. Sakura barrage Kakashi with swings of a kunai. Sasuke shouts at Sakura to dodge, as well as Sasuke does the fireball jutsu. In this what if, the jutsu is two times as big as it was in canon. It hits Kakashi but doesn't do much damage. Naruto then walks out of the bush, asking Kakashi if they'd passed. Kakashi asks what Naruto is talking about. Naruto then pulls two bells out of his pockets and says, We got the bells, so he passed right. Kakashi looks down and says, How did you? Naruto then explains how... When they first met, he placed a seal on his back when they greeted him. Sasuke then and Sakura then look at Naruto in amazement, and Naruto gives one of them each a bell. Sakura asks why he'd fail for them, and Naruto simply says, because we were teammates. Kakashi then says, you will pass. Team 7 then celebrate, and their first mission starts the day after. After completing around 10 d rank missions, Naruto requests for a c rank mission, as he would like to further hone his skills in real, more difficult missions. The third Hokage accepts. Before the mission, Naruto meditates to talk to Kurama again. He's talked to Kurama almost every day for eight years, and Kurama finally admits they are friends. Naruto hasn't released a seal yet, but at this point, Naruto has about six times his Shippuden Chakra. Naruto tells Kurama he feels like something weird is going on with this mission. Kurama agrees. Naruto then says, he won't want the team though, as it might disrupt the balance. Kuruma then agrees, but he says to Naruto, keep a sentry technique active. Naruto says thanks for the advice to Kuruma and bids him a goodbye. This is part 4 of what if Naruto had the sun and moon seal as a child. We left off with Naruto and Kuruma thinking something weird is going on with the mission. So, Kuruma tells Naruto to put a sensory technique up. Team 7 then sets out on the mission. At this point, they walk past the puddle. Sasuke, Kakashi, and Naruto notice it and wonder why it's there as it hasn't rained in a while. Suddenly, a demon brothers appear and cut Kakashi in half. Naruto and Sasuke quickly get into formation. Sasuke takes out one of the demon brothers whilst Naruto defeats another. Kakashi then walks out of a bush praising Naruto and Sasuke for taking care of it themselves. They all decide to carry on the mission after Naruto finishes interrogating Tatsuna. As they walk further, Naruto walks in front of Kakashi and Sasuke and signals that there are two people in a tree up ahead. Just as he lets them know, a kunai flies down towards Naruto, Sasuke and Kakashi. A sword follows quick after. They all dodge, Naruto then throws a flying thunder god kunai at the unknown people. They dodge, 
and Naruto teleports behind them. Naruto then swings his sword at the large one. This one blocks with the huge sword and Naruto's sword breaks. Naruto quickly teleports back to Kakashi without getting hit. Kakashi and Naruto mutter, Zabuza, of the seven swordsmen of the mist. In this timeline, Haku is spotted, so he jumps down with Zabuza. Zabuza activates the hidden mist jutsu. Naruto then uses Windstar Zephyr to blow away the mist. Kakashi then reveals his shine gun, and Sasuke says to himself out loud, Why does he have my clan's eyes? Naruto says rumour has it that his friend died in the last Great Ninja War and gave him his shine gun. Sasuke nods, and then Naruto says, Our battle starts here too. Haku appears before them. Sasuke tells Sakura and Naruto to protect the bridge builder. They nod. Naruto then asks Sakura to pass the branch underneath her foot. Sakura passes it to Naruto. As Naruto watches Kakashi get trapped in the water prison. Naruto tells Sakura to protect Hazuna and rushes towards Osa. Sasuke at this moment gets badly injured. Naruto teleports behind Kakashi and then slices off Zabuza's arm with a stick infused of wind chakra. Haku rushes over to Zabuza swiftly, retreating. Naruto goes over to Sasuke who's lying unconscious on the ground and a tear falls down the left side of his face. Sakura says, Naruto, your eyes, they're red and they're glowing. Naruto thinks to himself, so I finally got them, the Sharingan. Sasuke then wakes up and says, Naruto, you've unlocked your Sharingan. Naruto says, stay still, I'm healing you. Naruto uses a small amount of medical ninjutsu he knows to heal most of Sasuke's injuries. Sasuke's right eye is destroyed. Sasuke took out the eye and asked Naruto to stop the bleeding, so Naruto did. At this point, Naruto looks at his right hand with the white circle on it. Naruto then has the feeling he might be able to fix it. He puts his hand on Sasuke's right eye socket. Naruto then asks, Sasuke, could you open your right eye? To his amazement, Sasuke opens his right eye and it's there. He can activate the, the shine gun and everything. They then start to make their way to Dazuna's house when Kakashi collapses. The next day, Kakashi wakes up and is feeling fine because Naruto healed him quite a bit. Therefore, they take Tazuna to the bridge where they see Zabuza and Haku. Sasuke goes to fight with Haku, whilst Naruto fights Zabuza. Naruto asks Zabuza, whoever kills a ninja swordsman gets their sword correct. Zabuza tells him that's correct. So Naruto tells him that he's going to be taking his sword then. Enraged, Zabuza attacks Naruto. Naruto swiftly dodges. We now cut to Sasuke fighting Haku. Sasuke begins to get the upper hand, but Haku uses his ice mirrors, increasing his speed. So Sasuke can barely see his movements. After getting hit so many times, Sasuke finally unlocks a three turn away Sharing Gun in both of his eyes. Sasuke begins seeing through all of his moves and counters some of them. Sasuke then beats up Haku and he stops moving. Naruto is about to finish off Zabuza when Haku gets in the way and saves Zabuza. Naruto then uses his Tokno Jutsu on Zabuza, telling him how much Haku cared about him. Zabuza entrusts the sword with Naruto, and Zabuza, with his remaining strength, takes out Gatu and the mob. After a long mission, they all head back, with Naruto unlocking his Sharingan 2 Tomoe in his left and 1 Tomoe in the right. Sasuke also unlocks three turn away in both eyes, and uselessness doing nothing. After the mission, Kakashi gets called to a meeting. When he gets back, he tells Team 7 he has recommended them for the Chunin exams. They will decide to sign up and begin the Chunin exams. We skip to the first day of the Chunin exams. The written test begins. Naruto completes the test and gets 100% in record time, faster than the fourth Hokage. Sasuke and Sakura also pass relatively easily. The second exam is then explained and then they are told it starts tomorrow. Everyone arrives at the forest of death and the test begins. All teams move into the forest. They take down an enemy team but they have the same scroll so they keep on moving. 
Naruto then notices the presence and throws a kunai into the side of the tree. He asks, who's there? And a person comes out. They have pale white skin and snake-like eyes. Naruto asks them, what scroll do you have? The person shows the scroll they need. Sasuke and Naruto activate the Sharingan, and then the person begins to give off incredible bloodlust. Naruto asks, who are you? There was no reply. Enraged, Naruto teleports behind the person because of the kunai he threw earlier and stepped on their throat, knocking them to the ground. Naruto's eyes now both two turn away, and he says, I asked you who you were, but it doesn't seem like that mattered. The person then shed their skin, but Naruto now has the scroll they needed. Naruto knew that was Orochimaru, as of the jutsu he just used. He threw a kunai to the center, held onto Sasuke and Sakura, and escaped. They ran inside, and they were two minutes before Gara's team. They were then confirmed to be through, as Aruka told them so. Naruto is now a bit on edge, as he just saw Orochimaru. Naruto then took Sasuke and Sakura to Hiruzen and said, Orochimaru has infiltrated the village, and we just fought him in the forest of death. I broke his neck, but he used some jutsu to use a different body. Hiruzen is shocked, and Naruto tells him to keep an eye out, and double security in the chimney exams. Hiruzen nods as everyone returns to the tower. They are then told more people had passed the exam, so there will be a preliminary round. The preliminary rounds begin. Sakura and Iyama's battle goes the same with a draw. Sasuke stomps the chakra absorbing guy. He beats him with three hits. Kiba versus Naruto then begins. At this point, Kiba to him is pretty much fodder. Kiba attacks Naruto with Akamaro using fang over fang. Naruto then watched Kiba rush towards him. Naruto could easily see his movements without the shine gun. Naruto just slaps Kiba into one wall and Akamaro into the other with him winning the fight. The Hinata Neji fight is the same, with Naruto doing his speech, telling Neji that he's going to beat him. Rock Lee loses to Gaara, and that's how the preliminary rounds went. They are then told they have one month training period. Naruto goes back to the Uchiha compound with Sasuke. Fugaku is waiting with them, and tells Naruto he will be training with the Sage, and tells Sasuke he will be training with himself Itachi and Shisui. The sage appears before Naruto and tells them they will set off right away. So Naruto says his goodbyes, packs his bags and goes off with Jiraiya. On the first day, Jiraiya teaches Naruto the summoning Jutsu and on his third try, Naruto summons Gamabunta by himself without the Nine Tails help. Naruto then passes Gamabunta's test, Jiraiya is impressed and he sees his previous student, Mingato, in Naruto. Dryer had then created a new resolve to train Naruto as he may be the child of prophecy. This is part five of What If Naruto Got the Sun and Moon Seal as a Child. We left off with Jiraiya starting to train Naruto and teaching him the summoning jutsu. Naruto also summoned Gamabunta and passed his recruitment test. Throughout the one month training period, Naruto would learn the Rasengan and he has made an imperfect jutsu. Jiraiya had classified this jutsu as an S rank jutsu. Naruto and Jiraiya then had a spar to finish it off. Naruto rushes to Jiraiya and uses lightning style lightning hand. Jiraiya dodges and summons a toad. He spits oil, then Jiraiya uses a fire style to ignite it. Naruto then uses a water style, then that cancels out Jiraiya's jutsu. Naruto then throws a kunai at Jiraiya. He dodges, but Naruto then teleports behind him and lands a huge kick onto Jiraiya. This sends him in flying into a tree. Naruto starts running towards Jiraiya, who uses a water dragon jutsu. Naruto then counters using earth style mud wall, blocking the attack. Jiraiya then runs at Naruto, trying to attack him. Naruto punches Jiraiya, who then bursts into smoke. Jiraiya then appears behind Naruto and hits him with a water bullet jutsu. Jiraiya summons Gamabunta. Naruto then sees this. He thinks this is a massive threat. He then begins to form hand seals. 
and gets ready to use his new jutsu. Before he finishes the jutsu, Jiraiya tells Naruto to stop and admits defeat. Naruto asks why. Jiraiya explains, if Naruto hit him with that, he just could die. Naruto says he's sorry, and they begin to head back to the village. From the month training, Sakura works a little bit harder than in canon. At this point, she's around 80% as strong as Land of Waves Kakashi. Sasuke has learned Chidori and Itachi, Shisui, Fugaku, and Kakashi taught him how to use the Sharingan properly. At this point, he's comparable to himself after beating Orochimaru in canon. Naruto has learned the Rasengan, the Summoning Jutsu, and his new Jutsu. He now also has the three Tomoe Sharingan in his left and the two in his right. Naruto is now comparable in base to KCM2 Naruto with Sage Mode in canon. This is the teenage form, not the last form. Just before the exam starts, Kuruma says to Naruto that his body is almost ready to handle all of his chakra. Naruto says that he is thankful for everything Kuruma has done for him. Kuruma gets moody and says he doesn't need to thank him. Naruto then gets some sleep, ready for the fight against Neji tomorrow. Finally, the day of the Chuni exam's knockout stage arrives. First up is Naruto vs Neji. The fight begins with Neji lecturing Naruto that his destiny is to lose here. Naruto then just says, okay Neji, whatever you say. Neji gets in a stance and Naruto pulls out a scroll. This scroll then summons a sword. This sword is the sword we are all familiar with. The execution is blade. Everyone is shocked and here is in the last to himself and says, so. Naruto got his hand on one of the legendary swords. Naruto swings the sword around to intimidate Neji. Neji says to Naruto, so what, you have a fancy sword, you're still a failure. Naruto walks towards Neji. He intends to beat Neji easily and to humiliate him. Naruto walks into Neji's range and Neji strikes Naruto. Naruto easily blocks his weak attack. He says, Neji, you should have trained. Then you could have put up a better fight. Naruto then slaps Neji across the face, sending him flying into the side of the stadium, just like he did with Kiba. Naruto then looks at the proctor, who hasn't said anything yet. He then stares back to Neji, who is now standing again. Naruto is surprised, but Neji is heavily injured. Neji runs towards Naruto and uses the 8 trigram 64 palm technique. Naruto dodges every single shot. Neji shouts at Naruto, stop dodging and accept your fate. Naruto then says to Neji, I guess I just didn't hit you hard enough. Neji grits his teeth as he does the 64 palms technique once again. And then he takes it further and uses 128 palms. Naruto dodges all the strikes and says to Neji, I apologize. It seems like you have trained hard and I was wrong. Neji then throws one more last ditch attempt at Naruto. Naruto catches this punch and says, I'll finish you off with the respect you deserve as a warrior. Naruto slaps Neji again into the wall of the stadium, but this time Naruto hit him with a lot of his strength. This sends Neji flying through the wall and he declared Naruto the winner. The next fight was Sasuke versus Gaara. This time, Sasuke enters the stadium on time and is immediately ready to fight Gaara. The proctor says start, Sasuke begins attacking Gaara. At this point he is far stronger than Gaara, so he blitzes Gaara with speed similar to 6th gate Lee, maybe 7th. Gaara is getting beat up by Sasuke. He then goes into his half monstrous form and Sasuke is still destroying and wiping the floor with Gaara. The match begins to even out when Gaara goes into his mini Shikaku state, although Sasuke isn't using his full power. Sasuke then beats up Gaara so badly that he runs away. Sasuke follows the escaping Gaara as the leaf invasion begins. Naruto, my guy, and Kakashi defeat all the sound and sand ninja. Hiruzen is battling Orochimaru. Naruto rushes to find Fugaku and Itachi. He explains to them that they need to help Hiruzen. 
but they say they can't get into the barrier. Naruto says, I can. He holds on to Itachi and Fugaku and teleports them to Hiruzen. Because of the seal that is on Hiruzen's hand, full body Shikaku appears in the distance and Naruto tells Fugaku and Itachi to handle this. They nod and Naruto teleports the seal on Sasuke's hand. He finds Sasuke lying on the ground as I don't think Sasuke even as powerful as he is could take on full Shikaku. Shikaku tries to stomp on him but Naruto threw a kunai into the tree far enough away and teleports them both to the tree. Naruto now has three Tomoe in both eyes as he is enraged that Gaara just tried to kill his friend. Naruto checks to see if Sasuke is okay and checks his pulse. Naruto feels nothing. Rage fills Naruto and he awakens his Mangaku Sharingan in his right eye in his right eye. And the Rinnegan with Tomoe in the left. Naruto quickly summons Gomabunta and tells him to stand here while he uses a jutsu. Gomabunta tells Naruto that he is messing with a tailed beast here. Naruto says he knows. Gumbunta asks what Jutsu he is using. Naruto tells it he's going to use the one that Jiraiya told him not to use against him. Gumbunta nods as he knows this is going to be a powerful Jutsu if it could beat Jiraiya. Naruto forms hand seals and says, Lightning style, God's wrath. A huge bow of lightning, wider than Shukaku, struck down and hit Gara so hard that Shukaku disappeared immediately. Gara was lying on the ground, on death's door. Gara asks Naruto how he's so strong, and Naruto does his talk no jutsu, explaining this to him. This makes Gara change his ways. Naruto then remade the seal on Gara, changing it to the five elemental seal. Gara thanks him as he will finally be able to get a good night's sleep, and now he won't kill people. We cut to Sasuke, who is on death's door. He is watching some sort of genjutsu, but no one seems to have put it on him. He then sees Naruto fighting Shukaku, and Shukaku just chops Naruto's head off. Sasuke then begins crying as his Mangekyu Sharingan awakes. He uses the Amaterasu on Shukaku and it was such a big Amaterasu that it burnt Shukaku down. We cut back to Naruto. Naruto takes Sasuke, whose pulse still isn't existent, and begins taking him back to the leaf. Naruto is just crying whilst carrying Sasuke's dead body. But then suddenly Sasuke opens his eyes and his pulse returns and Naruto is astonished. Sasuke also looked astonished and he said to Naruto, I thought you died. Naruto confused says to Sasuke, you died. Sasuke says, I don't know what happened, it must have been some weird genjutsu or dream. Naruto then sees Sasuke with a Mangekyou shine gun. Naruto is astonished, he says, he says to Sasuke, your eyes. They're the Mangekyou Sharingan. Naruto's eyes at this point are normal, but Sasuke says, it must have happened when I saw you die. We left off with Naruto defeating Shukaku, Sasuke getting revived, Sasuke unlocking the Mangekyou Sharingan, as well as Naruto unlocking the Mangekyou Sharingan and the Rinnegan. The next day, Naruto asks Sasuke to trade eyes. Sasuke asks why. Naruto explains that they have both unlocked the Mangekyou Sharingan the other day and says in order for them to stop going blind when using it, they need to swap eyes. Sasuke nods his head and they go into the leaf hospital and request the transplant. After explaining, they accept. Two hours later, the surgery is complete. Naruto now has one Mangekyou Sharingan in his right and the Rinnegan with Tomoe in the left. Sasuke has a dual 
Eternal, my Goku is shining down. Then go to Fugaku to see how their fight went. Fugaku is with Itachi, and Naruto asks how the fight went. Fugaku explains they are able to heavily damage Orochimaru with no casualties. This means the third did die, but unfortunately, Amari Orochimaru escaped. Naruto and Sasuke are relieved that Hiruzen survived. The next day, Hiruzen calls a meeting with the two elders, Danzo and Fugaku, and two more. When everyone gathers, Hiruzen announces that he plans on retiring once again, and is instating a brand new Hokage. Danzo then jumps at this opportunity saying that he would be a prime option as he has always placed the village's priorities above all else. Hiruzen interrupts and explains that the new Hokage is going to be chosen differently than how it was normally chosen. The people of the village are going to vote the new leader. Danzo outbursts and says this is ridiculous. Hiruzen tells Danzo to be quiet while he t tells everyone who the candidates are. Hiruzen then states the candidates are Tsunade, the slug princess. Jiraiya, the Toad Sage, Wicked Eye, Fugaku, the Copy Ninja, Kakashi, and the Hidden Leaf Cancel member, Danzo. Hiruzen goes on to say the voting will take place in two days. Any manipulation to win the title is a serious crime, and you will be punished. Everyone over the age of 12 can vote. The meeting is then dismissed. The next day, Naruto and Sasuke request to talk to Fugaku, Itachi, Shisui, and Kakashi. All six of them meet in a private area. Naruto then starts and says, I've called you all here because you all have the manga Kyoshangan. Everyone is surprised and asks Naruto what he means. Naruto explains, I'm very sorry, but I've been observing all you all, as I thought you all stood out as exceptional members of the Uchiha. I understand Kakashi is not an Uchiha, but I would also like to treat him like one. I understand that Itachi, you can use Black Flames and an extremely strong Genjutsu. Shisui, I know you also have an extremely strong Genjutsu at your disposal. Finally, Kakashi, I know you have a Teleportation Jutsu. I believe it's called Kamui. Fugoku, I do not know the abilities you hold, but I know you have the Mango Kyo. They all say it's correct. In this what if, Fugaku tells everybody his ability. Fugaku says, Naruto, my manga kill ability unfortunately isn't very strong in my left eye. I can show my thoughts and memories to someone through Genjutsu. And in my right eye, I can also use telekinesis on objects that have marked. Naruto nods in understanding. Naruto continues, well, Sasuke has also awakened his manga kill. Sasuke then shows his manga Kyo and says, Naruto and I switched eyes as it stops us from going blind when, he, when we use the manga Kyo. The same as Itachi, I can use black flames, however I can also extin extinguish and manipulate them. Everyone gasps because at the age of 13, Sasuke has got the eternal manga Kyo Sharingan. Naruto then says, I have something weird that happened with my eyes as well. Everyone turns to Naruto and Naruto begins. I have Mangekyo in my right eye, but he then activates his eyes and a Rinnegan with Tomoe appears. It seems to have a stronger Rinnegan in my left eye. Naruto says, everyone stares wordlessly at Naruto. Finally, Sasuke breaks the silence and asks what he can do with his eyes. In this what if, Limbo is Naruto's Mangekyo ability. Naruto says, with my Mangekyo, my ability is called Limbo and it is a clone that exists in alternate space and can hit people from this world. The only way to sense it is through nature energy. Everyone says that's an extremely strong ability. Naruto then says, you can see the clone if you straighten the manga Kyo too, but you need nature energy to attack it. Everyone nods. Naruto then explains the six Rinnegan abilities as well as well as the two Sasuke had in canon. Everyone is shocked and trying to process all the information. They talk for a bit longer and then leave. 
As Naruto is leaving, he says to Fugaku, I hope you win the Hokage election. Fugaku asks, so not Jiraiya? Naruto explains, Jiraiya is never like that kind of stuff. Fugaku says, I see. They then say goodbye to each other. We skip to Hiruzen, announcing the Hokage. He says, you have all voted for the Hokage. And the man that will be receiving that title is pressure built up around the village. Fugaku Uchiha with 52% of the votes. Cheers are heard all over the village as Fugaku walks forward wearing the Hokage hat. Naruto and Sasuke are on top of the Hokage's office and Danzo is infuriated. He storms back to the foundation office. This is part 7 to what if Naruto got the Sun and Moon seal as a child. We left off with Fugaku Uchiha becoming the fifth Hokage and Danzo storming off to the foundation. One week later, Fugaku is in his office and has noticed Danzo has been ordering the foundation on Buu to attack other villages as well as some members of the Uchiha. He calls Naruto to his office and tasks him with eliminating Danzo. This order has been allowed by the two elders and Lord Third himself. Naruto says, understood. Fugaku says, knock out the other members, you can only kill Danzo. Naruto then leaves and gets ready to set out. He now stands in front of the foundation hideout and he sees four guards outside. He gauges them all to be around average Jonin strength. Naruto sends two Limbo clones to fight them. Within one second, they're all knocked out. Naruto silently made his way into the middle of the foundation. No one wants to be seen anywhere. But then suddenly, 50 Anbu, each with a strength of a high joining, surround Naruto. Naruto then makes three shadow clones, and all three of the clones use the same hand seals. As they use a fire style, fire dragon jutsu. Just like that, all of the shinobi fall unconscious. Naruto held back as to not kill them. But then, Naruto sees Danzo on the second floor. Danzo is with one of his guards. Danzo begins to run away, but Naruto switches places with the guard that is right next to him and slams Danzo into a wall. Danzo gasps fair and coughs out the words, the Rinnegan. Naruto then slices Danzo's head. This wipes it clean off. But then, Danzo appears behind Naruto. We all know this is Izanagi. Naruto already knows this. But in this timeline, he only has one Sharingan. So, he's now used up his one Izanagi. Naruto then threw a flying thunder god kunai at him. Danzo dodged. Naruto then teleports behind him and uses the water dragon jutsu and then combines it with a lightning hound jutsu. Danzo then lays on the ground and Naruto goes over to him, stabbing him in the neck, killing him. Naruto then flees with Danzo's body. He brings the body back to Fugaku, who has a flying thunder god seal on him. Naruto hands Fugaku Danzo's body. Fugaku tells Naruto how he did a great job. Fugaku then asks Naruto, how many Anbu are they knocked out? Naruto replies, four outside and fifty inside Lord Fifth. Fugaku then replies, well done, I'm impressed you took out all those ninja and killed Danzo within an hour. Also, drop the Lord Fifth, I know you're more powerful than I am. Naruto then says, you're too kind Fugaku. Naruto then bids Fugaku farewell and leaves his office. The next day, Danzo's death is announced. It shocks many villagers. They do not mind, as Danzo isn't particularly liked. One month passes from the incident, and Naruto, Sasuke, Shisui, Itachi, and Kakashi are all training together. Naruto goes up to Kakashi and asks him to close his eyes. Kakashi does this, and Naruto puts both of his eyes over Kakashi's eyes. He then tells Kakashi to open his eyes. Everyone looks at Kakashi shocked. Kakashi then notices he can no longer see Chakra with his left eye. Kakashi asks Naruto what he did. Naruto then replies, 
Hikashi. I know that your Sharingan is always active and draining your chakra constantly, so I decided to use the power I possess to make you part of Uchiha. Kakashi, flow the chakra into both your eyes. Kakashi does this and then the Sharingan appears in both of his eyes. The three Tomoe in his left and the one Tomoe in his right. Everyone is shocked. Naruto then continues on saying, Kakashi, you need to train your right eye to get a three turn way and then eventually use your mangekyo and once that happens you will be able to use the susano like the rest of us. Kashi, another good thing is that this is the eternal mangekyo shangan so no matter how much you use it you won't go blind. It also means that you can train past the full armor susano. Naruto then tells Itachi and Shisui that if they want to progress their eyes more they need to train eyes. Shisui and Itachi not understanding this. The next day, Shisui and Itachi undergo the surgery to switch their eyes and they come back to Naruto and Sasuke with the eternal Margeko Shrinker. We now cut to Naruto and Sasuke when they are 15 years old. Naruto and Sasuke have now obtained the perfect Susana and Itachi and Shisui have obtained the full body Susana. Kakashi has got the full armor Susana and Fugaku hasn't been able to train but he's got the humanoid Susana. All Kage have recognized their strength and they have all gained the title, the five hit season. Naruto calls all of them to the training grounds to show him, to show off his newly obtained power. They all ask him what he could possibly have that is better than the perfect Susana. Naruto laughs as he enters KCM2. Everyone looks at him in awe as at this point Naruto is just giving off a godly aura. Naruto, Naruto then deactivates the cloak. He then says, I can finally handle the huge amount of chakra that is sealed within me. They all talk about what new techniques they want to learn and Naruto suggests that they learn sage mode. They all agree. Naruto explains that they need to reverse summon and summon themselves and it will bring them to a place to learn sage mode. The place will be adept to them, therefore making it easier for them to learn that type of sage mode. Naruto then tells everyone to meet back in one day. One day later, they all meet up. Sasuke says he's going to learn snake sage mode. Shisui says he's going to learn toad sage mode. Itachi says he's going to learn rhino sage mode. Kakashi says he's going to learn fox sage mode and Naruto says he will be learning Dragon Sage Mode. The benefits of each Sage Mode are in the Snake Sage Mode you get better vision, heightened senses and a quieter step and faster movements. Toad Sage Mode is the same as in Canon. Fox Sage Mode increases vision, speed and power. Rhino Sage Mode increases power significantly and speed. Finally, Dragon Sage Mode improves speed, perception, senses, strength, and chakra control. All Sage Modes help with chakra control, but considering how difficult Dragon Sage Mode is, it increases it even more. They all agree to meet back in the Leaf six months. This is part eight to what if Naruto got the Sun and Moon Seal as a child. We left off with all the hit season, learning sage mode, or not learning sage mode, but going to learn sage mode. They have all agreed to meet back in six months. Three months in, Naruto has mastered dragon sage mode and has taken on 10 A rank missions and two S rank missions to train his sage mode further. Then, suddenly he is confronted by an orange haired man in the leaf. He says, you should come with me, Naruto Uchiha. Naruto Naruto already knows who this man is. This is the man who defeated Hanzo. Pain of the Akatsuki. Naruto puts his hand on Pain and says, I think you are actually coming with me. Naruto then teleports far outside the leaf to an open area. Naruto then says to Pain, I know your other paths are in the leaf. Tell them to come here. I'll play with you. Pain says to Naruto, how kind you are. Three minutes pass, and the five other pains assemble. Naruto then says to Pain, Shall we begin? 
there is a new power I wish to test out. Naruto then casts the hidden mist jutsu. As Naruto knows how Pain's ability works, Naruto rushes at the Naraka path and swiftly kicks him into the ground. He then uses Chidori to finish him off. Before the animal path can even summon anything, Naruto blitzes over to use his Rasengan and destroy his head. The mist finally clears up. The D the path speaks. Quite impressive. But not enough to beat me, Naruto. Naruto then throws 15 flying thunder god kunais around the battlefield. The diva path then uses a mighty pull on Naruto. Naruto begins flying towards Pain, but before he could reach him, he vanishes. He vanished to one of the positions that he mocked out. Pain then got extremely angry as he could not hold Naruto, and then he used an insanely powerful almighty push creating a giant meteor-like divot. Naruto activates his full armor, half Susano, and isn't damaged by the blast. He then deactivates his Susano. Naruto then activates Sage Mode as he wishes to test his limits. He then blitzes towards one of the pains, taking a chakra rod before going back to his original position. Pain couldn't even see this happen as Naruto moved at 100,000 meters per second. Naruto then says, I enjoyed it while it lost. But then, Naruto then says, I want to test out a jutsu. It's a jutsu I've added sage mode onto, and I finally mastered it. Naruto then uses hand seals and says, lightning style, God's wrath. A huge lightning strike fell down on pain. And the aftermath, and the aftermath was incredible. He left a two kilometer deep hole with the diameter of two hidden leaf villages. The attack was so brutal, it incinerated the paths of pain. Naruto then stabs the chakra rod into himself, searching for the caster. Naruto then realizes that the original caster had died trying to stop this deadly attack. Another three months pass as everyone is set to return. Naruto has been assigned 14 S rank missions and 10 A rank missions in this time. Naruto executed them perfectly, which Fugaku praised him for. Naruto goes to the training compound to see everyone gathered. They greet each other, and Naruto asks how their training went. They all say they have mastered their respective sage modes, and then Itachi asks Naruto if he had also mastered his sage mode. Naruto says yes. Kakashi then asks if they should all test them out. And Naruto says he already has. Naruto then explains Pain's attack up until the point of his final attack. Naruto says the amp of his sage mode was beyond crazy. And he then says, I used my God's Wrath Jutsu and I need to show you what I did. The aftermath is insane. Naruto then takes them to a place where he destroyed Pain. Itachi asks Naruto if he fought Pain in a giant canyon. Naruto then explains that this was flat land. And this is what he did. Everyone looks at Naruto and asks him, was it just sage mode? Not even nine tails or Susano? Naruto shakes his head and everyone looks in amazement. Naruto then says, I even held back as I didn't want to incinerate their bodies. But as you can see, that didn't go to plan. Naruto then says, so how about it? How about we race each other in sage mode? All around, everyone agrees. Naruto then says, let's see, it's about 2,500 kilometers if we run around. They all nod. They will then transform into their sage mode. A purple aura with black sparks surrounds Naruto. Shisui has orange rings around his eyes. Itachi has one grey horn. Kakashi has claws and a bit of fur on his hands and also moves on all fours. Finally, Sasuke has scales on his arms and slit-like eyes. Itachi then says, ready, go. Everyone sets off and time slows. By the quarter of the way, Kakashi is slightly in front, followed by Sasuke, then Naruto, then Itachi, and finally Shisui. At this point, at the halfway point, Naruto is about 500 meters ahead, followed by Kakashi. Then, Sas then Sasuke, 
then she sweet and then Itachi. Naruto widens the gap by the three quarters mark as he is 50 kilometers ahead in front followed by Kakashi then Sasuke and then Itachi and then finally Shisui. Naruto then wins by a huge margin as he is 250 kilometers by the end. He is then followed by Sasuke, then Kakashi, then Shisui, and then Itachi. Sasuke then says to Naruto, You won this time, but I'll win next time, Naruto. Naruto then remarks, saying, We will see about that. News then hits all the great villages as a bunch of Jinchuriki have been stolen by the Akatsuki. Naruto then says, But I killed Pain. I, s I thought he was the ringleader. But then, Fugaku relays that he went to a five car gate summit. And Madara Uchiha said he was going to declare war. Fugaku then continues, saying, I have scheduled another five car gate summit for in one week. Naruto then nods. Fugaku tells Naruto that he need not worry about it, as they are plenty strong. Naruto then tells everyone in the five hits that they can all train, as Fugaku says he's got it under control. They all reverse summon and continue training in their summoned areas. This is part nine, so what if Naruto got the sun and moon seal as a child? We left off with who seems to be Madara declaring war upon the shinobi world. Naruto and the rest of the Hitsuzen also went off to train. We skip another day as Naruto felt he had no more to learn. So he returned to the leaf. In this timeline, the Akatsuki are way more powerful than they were. They have about 50 members that are all able to fight around two Kage level fighters. Kabuto has also teamed up with Madara slash Obito already and during the fight of Kage Summit war was declared and they said the battle would begin in one week. All but Naruto at this point are training in the reverse summons. The allied shinobi force is quickly created as Naruto joins Gara's platoon. A week later, they will head to the battlefield where they are met by Kakuzu and Ida. In this timeline, they are two to three times stronger as they were in canon. He tells them that he needs the platoon to stand down and keep the ceiling core ready. Naruto in his base is comparable to all five Kage. Naruto looks at them and then blitzes towards them, throwing hands with both of them at the same time. He done can't land a hit, therefore he can't draw Naruto's blood. Naruto then roundhouse kicks he done into a nearby cliff and uses a water style dragon jutsu on Kakusu. This knocks Kakusu back, but doesn't knock him over. Naruto then blitzes over to Kakusu. Naruto then blitzes over to Kakuzu and he sliced through all five of Kakuzu's hearts. This kills Kakuzu. Hidan runs towards Naruto, slicing it in. Naruto then forms 50 quick hand seals and puts a curse seal on Hidan, rendering him from moving. Naruto then takes his scythe and the ceiling core seal him away. Then, suddenly, 5,000 Waizesu swarm from the left and 5,000 from the right. Naruto tells Gara to take everyone to the left as he will take care of them on the right. All the shinobi start fighting. Naruto then activates his base 3 ton away Sharingan in both of his eyes and says, Now, this is more like it. Naruto then runs a Waizesu, creating a lightning katana in his right hand and just absolutely destroys 3,000 Waizesu within 5 seconds. The other 2,000 rush at him. Naruto then uses a smaller version of God's Wrath. And Naruto makes hand seals and says, Lightning style, Beast Slayer. 
Narva then incinerates 2,000. Now, he has taken down 5,000 enemies in about 20 seconds. Narva then kills the remaining 1,250 white Zetsu on the other side. Suddenly, a presence is sensed on the top of the cliff. Naruto activates his shrine gun again and feels an immense threat. Five figures appear on top of the cliff. The five figures are the third Raikage, the fourth Kazakage, the second Tsuchikage, and the second Mizukage. And then the biggest threat of all, Maduro Uchiha. Naruto, in a serious tone, tells Gara to tell the platoon to stay out of this fight. Gara does so, but asks to fight his father. Naruto says, that's fine. Gara then pushes back the reanimated Kazakage. Gara does this so they can have an, in an uninterrupted fight. The fight plays out the same as in canon, with Gara sealing away the Kazakage relatively easily. On the other hand, Naruto is facing four enemies. Madara sits down and says he will fight Naruto if he can prove himself. The three Kage jump down towards Naruto. Naruto says, I respect you three Kage a lot, but I must defeat you. The three agree and say you need backup though. Naruto then says, I have activated my shrine gun, I'll be fine. You shouldn't be too cocky. Naruto then blitzes towards the right Kage, punching him in the side of the cliff as he is faster than the Raikage by quite a bit. Naruto then uses a giant fireball jutsu to blow away the Mizukage. He then uses a water dragon jutsu against the Tsuchikage, which blows him back. Naruto then pulls out a blade and slices the Raikage to pieces, and the ceiling core seals him away. Naruto then throws two kunai at the two Kage. They say to Naruto, it would take more than that to take us down. Naruto then teleports behind one, kicks him far away, and then slams the Tsuchikage into the ground with a Rasengan. At this moment, Naruto places a seal on his back. Naruto then blitzes the Mizukage and slams him into the ground, allowing him to be sealed by the ceiling core. The Tsuchikage then attempts to use particle style, but then Naruto teleports to the seal behind it and stomps on his head, crushing it into the ground. He then gets sealed away. Madara then gets ready to fight, but then he starts disappearing. The reanimation has been undone, Madara said before he went. May we meet again, Naruto. The army platoon celebrates the win on the battlefield. This was the end of the first day. The second day of the war begins. A lot of things have happened. Kakashi has come back and he has been fighting Obito and revealed his identity. The fourth Hokage arrives along with the other three. The Ten Tails has also appeared. Obito fights Kakashi in the Kamui dimension and gets badly destroyed. But he then moves back to the normal dimension and absorbs the Ten Tails. Naruto then arrives and sees Kakashi about to fight Jupiter. Naruto asks Kakashi if he wants help, but Kakashi says he's going to handle this as he activates his Mangekyo and Sutano Aura Chakra. Kakashi now has way more Chakra Reserves. He has about four times the amount as Warrior Kakashi. Kakashi then uses several Jutsu which don't affect Obito. Obito fires a truth seeking orb at Kakashi, but Kakashi uses Kamui to make it disappear. Kakashi then activates Perfect Susano and Fox Sage Mode at the same time. Kakashi then begins to gain the upper hand by hitting Obito with a great water dragon jutsu. However, Obito then hits Kakashi with a truth seeker orb. This destroys his left arm. As Obito is about to finish off Kakashi, Naruto switches places with him, taking Kakashi over to the Gara. He then tells Sakura, who is with Gara, to try to heal him. When this doesn't work, Naruto then uses the Sun Seal to create a new arm for Kakashi. Naruto then uses full power going to KCM2, Perfect Susano, and Dragon Sage mode. Minato notices Naruto and thinks to himself, Naruto, you have surpassed my expectations. Naruto then blitzes towards Obito and punches him into the ground using a Rasengan. 
Naruto then blitzes his towards Obito and punches him into the ground, then using Rasengan to blow a hole into his chest. Naruto then goes over to the four Kage and they all look shocked as they just watched Naruto easily just wipe the floor with Obito. Hashirama then says, I'm glad someone has finally surpassed Madara and I. Naruto replies to Hashirama, I'm honoured by your praise. The god of Shinobi and the first Hokage that I admire so much. Hashirama laughs, saying to Naruto, You may become a finer Hokage than I. You have already surpassed me in strength. But then, suddenly, Obito is up again, injured, but up again. But then, out of nowhere, Obito is attacked from behind. This is part 10 to What If Naruto Got the Sun and Moon Seal as a Child. We left off with Obito getting stabbed by an unknown person. This happened right after Naruto beat Obito with ease. This person is none other than Madara Uchiha. Madara has just finished up battling Fugaku. He says he is one of the best fighters he had met. Luckily, Naruto can sense he is okay. Naruto can tell that Madara is potentially dangerous. Suddenly, the Juvi is extracted from Obito. This ghetto statue has all the tail beasts apart from the nine tails. Madara then absorbs it into himself. Suddenly, Shisui and Itachi appear. Kakashi says to Naruto to let them handle it, and Kakashi gets ready to fight again. Madara at this point only has one Renegon, but he's still incredibly powerful. Naruto lies down and closes his eyes as he is met face to face again with the Sage of Six Paths. The Sage of Six Paths explains to Naruto that he has managed to stop the reincarnation cycle with Sasuke. Naruto then says, so, why am I here? Hagoromo says that he has given Sasuke a huge power up and he is the other re reincarnation. The reincarnation of Indra that is. Naruto then receives another boost from Hagoromo. Hagoromo then says his goodbyes and says he has taken his leave. This boost is so massive that Naruto is now five times stronger than the Hokage full power Naruto and Sasuke is 2.5 times as powerful as his adult self. Naruto then awakens next to Sasuke. Madara in the fight is taking the upper hand as he takes the second Rinnegan from Obito. Madara then absorbs the god tree and overpowers Kakashi, Shisui and Itachi with relative ease. Naruto and Sasuke now know it's their time as they jump in and beat and begin combating Madara. As the fight restarts, Sakura arrives on the battlefield. Naruto then shouts to Sakura, telling her to heal Obito. At this point, Madara is getting beat up really badly, but then he activates the infinite Tsukiyomi. And Naruto, Sasuke, Itachi, Kakashi, and Shisui hide under their Susanoo, with Kakashi shielding Obito and Sakura. Eventually, the shimmering moonlight fades as the five hitters emerge. Madara then says to them, Let our final battle begin. Suddenly a hand goes through Madara's chest as Black Zetsu explains that he's going to revive Kaguya. Sasuke now has the same eyes as Naruto. However, they are slightly different in what they can do. They can travel through dimensions and turn people defeated into large chakra fruits. This comes into play later. Kaguya is revived as the battle begins. Naruto is two times stronger than Kaguya and Sasuke is about the same strength. In this timeline, Itachi, Kakashi and Shisui are comparable to dual Rinnegan Mardara with no tentails. So unfortunately, they aren't very helpful in this timeline. Naruto says to Sasuke, Sasuke let me handle this. Sasuke knows Naruto is capable and says, Okay, but don't kill her, just knock her down. Naruto agrees. Naruto then blitzes towards Kaguya, outspeeding her vision. 
and proceeds to unload several punches onto her, sending her flying into the ground. Kaguya then t teleports dimension. This moves everyone to the ice dimension. Naruto then takes this as an opportunity and blizzards her. Naruto, as he is stronger, overpowers her, knocking her to the ground once again. Naruto then shoots off several Juzu, such as the Water Dragon Juzu, the Fire Style Juzu, and the Lightning Style God's Wrath. This knocks her to the ground, but she is also on the brink of death. Naruto extracts the eight tailed beast from her when they teleport back to Earth. Sasuke then says she still has a huge amount of chakra. Sasuke then turns to her and turns her into a chakra fruit. This fruit contains half of the chakra of all the tailed beasts combined. Naruto then says this can't be known to the ninja world as he takes it out of Sasuke's hand. He chops it into four pieces and gives one to each of his four team members. They all say in unison that Naruto deserves it more. Naruto then says no because he has just taken all nine tailed beasts and he is a Jinchuriki of all of them. They say okay as Naruto turns around and says you're okay with that aren't you? All the tailed beasts agree and tell him that he is their new master and they will serve under him. Naruto then begins sealing them in to himself but says not serve I just want you all to be my friends Naruto then says good job to all of them as he undoes the infinite Tsukiyomi Sakura at this point has finally finished fully healing Obito Obito at this point tells Kakashi to just take his life as he does not deserve it Kakashi then says to Obito with a sincere tone, Obito, you taught me a lesson, an important lesson, all those years ago. You should atone for the sins you have committed and reinstate yourself into the village. Obito and Kakashi have a long conversation and Obito finally agrees to Kakashi's proposal. Naruto then restores Obito's eyes. So now he has two Mangekyo, however, one of them is only a one turn way Sharingan, so it's not as useful. Naruto has also made it so that he won't go blind. We skip one week after the war has passed. Itachi, Kakashi, and Shisui are all are all equals, being equivalent to eighty five percent of KCM two Sage of Six Paths mode team Naruto. Sasuke is five times stronger than his adult counterpart and Naruto is ten times stronger than his adult counterpart. All five Kage visit the leaf to see Naruto and also to attend the five Kage summit. The five Kage summit begins and Naruto is the Hokage's bodyguard. The four Hokage thank Naruto for saving them. Naruto says it's no big deal, I'm just glad you're all alive. The meeting then continues, and the Kage bring up the Biju. Naruto explains that they are all sealed with inside him. With the Kage shiver in fear of the strength Naruto now possesses, little do they know that Naruto's base form is slightly below par with his KCM 2 Sage of Six Parts mode in as Hokage in Boruto. Onoki, A and Mei get angry and say that it is unfair for one village to hold so much power. Naruto then looks at them and says, so what will you do about it? As he powers up into his new white cloak nine BG cloak. The other Kage calm down and say they're sorry. Naruto deactivates his cloak and says, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't matter anyways. I can take you all without their power, even without the Sharingan. The Kage, grit their teeth knowing that this is true. Vugaku says to Naruto, calm down Naruto. Naruto says, I'm sorry for my rude actions, but I want to ally with the five nations. I meant, I meant no ill will. The meeting continues with the five nations creating an alliance at the end of the meeting. Naruto asks A 
where B's corpse is. B says it's in the hidden cloud. Naruto asks if it's preserved. A nods. Naruto then throws a kunai with insane speed and accuracy into the hidden cloud. He holds onto A's shoulder and teleports him to the cloud. A takes Naruto to his corpse. Naruto then puts his hands together and says, Art of the Rene Rebirth. And suddenly B awakens. A is shocked and B asks what he's doing here in this casket in a wrap. A explains to B that he died and Naruto somehow just revived him. Naruto then says to B, let's head to the leaf, then you can enjoy yourself. B smiles and says, thanks to Naruto. Naruto then teleports them back to the leaf. This is part 11, so what if Naruto got the sun moon seal as a child? We left off with A and Naruto going to the cloud village and reviving B with the Rene Rebirth Jutsu, and then they went back to the leaf. A few days go by, and the five Kage are still in the village. The five Kage and the five Hitsuzen meet and ask if they want to come on to one of their training sessions. They say okay, as Fugaku and the four other Kage haven't trained with them before. Fugaku also hasn't witnessed their new found power. Naruto opens up a portal, and all ten of them follow him into the dimension. This dimension is quite empty. Naruto then tells Fugaku to close his eyes. Fugaku closes his eyes, and he turns Fugaku's Mangekyo Sharingan into an eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto tells Fugaku what he just did, and explains that now he can use his Mangekyo Sharingan without going blind. Naruto then ponders to himself and says out loud, what shall we do then? The Raikage A says, let's all have a spa, not knowing of how strong Naruto and the five hits in are. Naruto says, oh that's a great idea. Itachi then says, okay, to make it fair, us nine versus Naruto, but Naruto, you cannot use the BG mode. All the Kage say, that seems unfair, but Naruto says, Sounds like a deal. Sasuke then tells the fire Kage that they need to eat something. He then pulls out a chakra fruit and splits into five pieces. Each fruit has the same strength as half a tailed beast. Sasuke said it was from Black Zetsu and Naruto nods. All the Kage are about 1.5 times stronger now. Naruto then activates his base Sharingan and base Renegon, ready for battle. The five Kage and the other four Hidizum power up as well. Sasuke then says, Go. Naruto then does hand seals at lightning speed and releases a fireball Jutsu. The four of the five Hidizum and Fugaku activate their half body armor Susanoo, blocking the attack. Gara also blocks with his sand. A and Anoki and Mei get hit. They go flying back as the others carry on. Gara tries to catch Naruto in his sand, but Naruto easily dodges. However, Sasuke appears behind him, Chidori in hand, and Itachi, Shisui, and Kakashi are also charging at him up front. Naruto thinks to himself, I seem to be in a predicament. However, with mid-difficulty, Naruto bends over backwards, dodging Sasuke's Chidori, and then hits Sasuke with a roundhouse kick. This kick is about 50% stronger then a kick from 8th gate guy. Sasuke coughs up saliva as he goes flying a kilometer away where Fugaku catches him. Naruto then turns towards the other three and uses the fire style majestic destroyer flame. The three get sent back a couple hundred meters. Naruto then blitzes Anoki, Mei and A appearing behind them and chopping their necks knocking them down. For context these chops were about as strong as one of the eight gate skies punch. The others begin to get serious. Kakashi, Sasuke, Shisui and Itachi activate perfect Susano and Fugaku activates full body Susano. For the first time, 
Gara also creates a sand golem avatar. Naruto then realizes he's going to have to get a bit serious too. Naruto's eyes begin to change as he activates the Mangekyo Sharingan and the Rinnegan with Tomoe. Naruto begins to give off his godly white Susano aura as he activates the Susano ribcage. The six charge at Naruto with all but Gara, combining a fire style jutsu. Naruto forms hand seals at astonishing pace, casting water style raging waves. This cancels out the fire attack. However, it's too late. Sasuke has just smashed Naruto with his Susano blade. Naruto's Susano rib cage gets cracked and he gets slightly winded. Fugaku, Shisui, Kakashi, and Itachi then slam a Susano hands onto Naruto. Naruto is then forced to activate his Susano skeleton form as he then overpowers them all and knocks them to the ground. Naruto then activates his full body Susano. They are now fighting on even turns for the next two minutes. Naruto then lands a huge punch onto Gara, sending him flying into Fugaku, rendering Gara unconscious and Fugaku quite injured. Naruto then switches places with Gara, punching Fugaku again, knocking him out. Naruto then stares down at the other four and says, It's time I end this. The other four reply, Today is the day we beat you, Naruto. They smile at each other as they begin to rush. The three Kage, they got knocked down first. Look at the battle, as shivers run down their spine. Onoki opens his mouth and says, If we weren't given that huge power boost, we would have died. No doubts in my mind that we would have died, 100%. He carries on saying, Naruto Uchiha, what a scary person he is. He's taking on the nine strongest shinobi by himself. A and May just nod in agreement. We move back to the battle. Naruto awakens his perfect Susano. It shines with its overpowering light. The four say he's finally revealed it. We finally pushed him to this point. Naruto congratulates the four on making him use the perfect Susano. But Naruto says, you cannot beat me yet. Naruto then unsheathes his sword, and with four swings of his sword, two times the speed of light, the four get knocked out. Each one of these swings was three times as powerful as Sasuke's Indra's arrow in canon. Naruto lays all the knocked out ninja in front of him. He then activates his nine biju cloak and then begins to restore their chakra and heal their wounds. After five minutes, they are back to good condition. All nine ask Naruto, how, how are you so strong? Naruto replies, I train in this dimension for 14 hours a day. 14 hours in here is 3.5 hours in our world. They all nod and understand that Naruto works extremely hard and he is also using his powers to his advantage. We skip to all the Kage and Hitsuzen returning to the leaf. The Kage's entourage notices that the Kage have just got an insane boost in strength. This is obviously because they received the power of half a tailed beast. The Kage finish up the summit, with the Kage agreeing on a peace treaty with all five nations. The Kage then begin to take their leave. To give an idea of the strength of the five Kage, Mei is the weakest and she is about as strong as EMS Sasuke in canon. A is the second weakest, and is about the strength of KCM2 Naruto in Sage Mode. This is Team Naruto, of course. Onoki is as strong as EMS Madara, as the Chakra Fruit made him feel 20 years younger. Gara is the second strongest and 5% weaker than the Tenseigan Chakra Mode Tonari. And Fugaku is the strongest, 2.5% stronger than Tenseigan Chakra Mode Tonari. So the current Kage are quite a bit stronger than in canon. Obito is also around 90% as strong as EMS Alive Madara. This makes him slightly weaker than Anoki. 
This is part 12 to Otif Naruto got the Sun and Moon Seal as a child. We left off with Naruto battling the five Kage and four of the five Hitsuzen. We skip one year to the five Hitsuzen and the Hokage having powered up. Fugaku can now use the perfect Susana and is at around 60% of KCM2 Sage of Six Paths mode Teenage Naruto. And Kakashi Itachi and Shisui around the strength of 80% Sage of Six Paths mode, Hokage Naruto. Sasuke is 7 times stronger than his adult self, and Naruto is 14 times stronger than his adult self. Obito has progressed to being as strong as one Rinnegan alive murderer. Naruto has spent the past year developing a new jutsu. This jutsu is the Dimension Travel Jutsu. He developed it for the other Hitsuzen, as he can just do it with his Rinnegan. Sasuke is also trained almost non-stop in this year, as he needed to keep up with Naruto. They roughly gained the same amount of strength as each other in this time period, however Naruto trained a lot in Jutsu development instead of strength. But because of his intense methods, it still made Naruto a lot stronger. Naruto then taught the space-time ninjutsu that he created to the five hitters in, and Fugaku the fifth Hokage. We skip one more year to the events of the last. The events go similar than in canon. Nabi gets kidnapped and Naruto confesses to Hinata. Tuneri then takes Hinata. Now this is where the events change. Fugaku sends Shikamaru, Sakura, Sai and Obito. At this point, Obito has unlocked his perfect Susana and is about 20% stronger than a live EMS murderer. Before they set off on this mission, Naruto is by the passageway to the moon. He tells them to bring Hinata back safe for him. They tell him that they will. Naruto then shakes Obito's hand, placing a small seal on it, just in case. We know this is the flying Rijing seal. The four then set off to the moon as they get ready to enter the castle. Sai creates birds for them all to fly on. They proceed to carefully infiltrate the enemy's territory. They proceed with extreme caution as they understand that one wrong move can result in the mission's failure. By the time they make it a quarter of the way in, they have broken about 80 mid journey level puppets. They then see Tonari with Hinata. Shikamaru uses shadow possession as he holds Tun as he holds Tonari in place, stopping the marriage. Sai then runs and grabs Hinata and then takes the mind control tag out of her system. At this point, Tonari uses Almighty Push to knock away Shikamaru and unbinded him from the shadow possession jutsu. Teneri then takes Hinata back once more and puts her in a cage. Obito then hits Teneri with his humanoid Susano. Teneri is now on the surface of the moon as it sent him up. Teneri then activates the Tensegan chakra mode and thus the battle begins between Obito and Teneri. Obito then further evolves his Susano into the armored Susano, and for about a minute Obito is throwing hands with Tuneri. However, as expected, Tuneri lands a huge blow on Obito who goes flying. Obito lands once again, but Obito realizes that he needs to use his full power. Obito then activates his perfect Susano. Tuneri then responds by creating the Otsutsuki Golem to fight this Susano. The fight is hard fought and Obito takes out the golem. But because of the lack of chakra, this Tensegan chakra mode to an area, takes advantage and uses his green chakra ball to slam it into Obito. But it gets blocked, not by Obito, but by Naruto, who just collides his Rasengan with it and knocks Tenere back several hundred meters. Naruto tells Obito, you did great. You sit back and rest. Naruto then looks at Toneri and says to him, with intense bloodlust in his eyes, How 
dare you mind control Hinata, and how dare you steal her away from me. For that, you will pay. Naruto then walks towards Teneri, giving off such an intense aura that he can't move. Naruto then stands within striking range. Teneri musters up all of his strength and uses the golden wheel technique, which Naruto in base just swipes away with his arm. Naruto then says, you have, a, you have astonishing amounts of chakra, but it seems that you lack finesse like this. Naruto then hammer kicks Teneri, flattening him into the ground in one hit. Naruto tells Sasuke to come to him now using a technique that allows him to talk with Sasuke. Sasuke arrives on the moon and turns him into a chakra fruit. Now, Naruto confesses to Hinata once again, and they begin dating. The six are now back on Earth, and Naruto asks Sasuke for the chakra fruit. Naruto gauges that it has about the strength of eight-tailed beasts. He then chops the fruit in four and gives one to each of the members of the original four. This making them all stronger by two-tailed beasts. All but Obito are now about the level of KCM2 Team Naruto in canon. Obito is about the strength of 90% of Jubito. The leaf has become so powerful that if they wanted to, they could destroy the world. Naruto or Sasuke could also just do it themselves. This is part 13 to what if Naruto got the Sun Moon Seal as a child. We left off with Naruto defeating Tonari and power scaling the five hits in and the Hokage. Now, this is where a lot of theory comes in. To make up for the huge time skip between Boruto and the last, I'm going to make a custom arc to fill in the time. One week after the events of the moon, the five hits in are assigned an S rank mission. Fugaku explains the rogue country that has been rapidly expanding called the Shadow Country, for sure. 20 S rank ninja have gone rogue in the past two weeks, and 12 the week before. Your mission is to infiltrate the rogue country and find out their goals and why so many are turning rogue. I want you to retrieve all the rogue ninja from our country as well. The five hits in, then say, okay, how will this mission work? Fugaku places six ninjas information and pictures of the target. Fugaku says, if the organization poses any threat to any of the five nations, tear it down from the inside. The mission will take roughly one and three quarter years. The mission starts today. Fugaku says they will be going under fake names and there will be high ranking Joni of the Hidden Leaf Village. Fugaku continues. Naruto, you will be the leader of the five-man squad. Your mission starts now. Naruto uses KCM2, but the white cloak, to touch the four members and teleport to the village gates. Naruto then explains that he's marked out a route and they should follow it. It takes roughly five days to get to the rogue ninja land. At the entrance, Naruto hands everyone a chakra concealer tag and tells them to apply it to their neck. It will go invisible once on. They all do as the captain instructed and headed into the rogue ninja village. As they entered, they were immediately surrounded by 20 S rank rogue ninja. They get their blades ready to attack. But just before this happens, a booming voice shouts, stand down. A large man with the chakra strength Similar to Otsutsuki, he seems to be around 75% of Kaguya's power. This man walks towards them. He towers over them, but then says in a kind tone, Or do you like travellers? After choosing his words very carefully, Naruto says, I heard this place harbours rogues. We are here to seek refuge, if you'd allow it, sir. The man then smiles and says, of course, we harbour lots of rogues. 
We believe the five great nations are corrupt. We'd gladly take in rogues like you. Itachi then replies to him, Thank you, sir. We greatly appreciate it. Is there anything we need to do? The man turns around, saying, Of course. It's not big, just a few things. Come with me. The five hitters in are brought to an office in a small city. Naruto thinks to himself, This is rather sophisticated for rogues. But proceeds to enter into the office. They all think this is quite similar to the Hokage's office. The man tells them to sit down, as five chairs are seated in front of his desk. He then says, We would be glad to allow you to join our village. However, there are a few things we need from you. First, cross out your headband. Second, fill out these forms. And third, state your reasoning for coming here. They all nod as they cross out their fake headbands. They all proceed to fill in the form. Names, ranks in the village, chakra natures, and then the reason they have sought refuge. They filled it out with convincing reasons. The man takes in their forms and says to them, I see. You seem to be quite infamous in your village. We will gladly accept you into the village hidden in the shadows. That's what we call ourselves anyway. They all thank the man and ask for his name. He then says, Nice to meet you, all. He then says, Nice to meet you all. I'm you. You then goes on to explain how the village works. Our village takes on small jobs from small towns in the area. We don't get paid money, rather food and resources. We have an arena for rankings if you are interested. And we also have plenty of housing. He then tosses them all a key and says, this is your home now, and smiles. They all head to their rooms in apartment complexes. They are all next to each other. They begin a meeting in Naruto's room. Naruto says, I've already analysed and predicted the amount of people that live here. It's about 200 S rank ninja and 800 A rank. Sasuke replies, I agree, and that's a lot. However, they seem to have all powered up quite a lot. The weakest A rank ninja I saw was probably getting close to S rank. He then listed all the A rank ninjas that he thought had gone extremely strong. They all nod, and Itachi says, I believe it is the fighting arena that started this growth. Kakashi then says, I agree. However, I also saw they have incredible advanced training grounds too. Naruto then says to Kakashi, I noticed that too. In terms of technology, they are on par, if not even more technologically advanced than the five great nations. They all agree with Naruto's evaluation. Naruto then continues, saying, We are going to sign up for the arena tomorrow. They all tell Naruto that's too risky and we should observe. Naruto then says, No, that's even more risky, as we will most likely be closely monitored as we're new to the village. Therefore, if we join the fighting arena, we will seem like the other rogues. Itachi then realises and says, You're right, Naruto. As this is an infiltration mission, we must act like the other rogues. So signing up for the arena is the best way to gather information without risking being caught. Naruto then says, we get up early in the morning. Let's all get to sleep. They all head back to their allocated rooms and get some sleep. The next day arrives as all five of them head to the arena. They locate where the sign up booth is. The lady running the booth says, okay, you have to fight at least once every other day or you'll move down in ranking. You are limited to one fight a day, and to move up the rankings, you must challenge people above your rank. You are placed at the bottom, you will now have the ranks 961st, 962nd, 963rd, 964th, and 965th. You will be randomly assigned a fight with someone within 20 ranks above or below. They will agree and sign up. The lady then continues and says, would any of you like to fight today? Naruto and Sasuke in unison say, Yes.
Yes. The lady then says, 964th, you will be fighting 954th, and 965th, you will be fighting 947th. Your matches begin in one hour, you must fight till one is no longer able to continue and gives up. 964th is Sasuke, and 965th is Naruto. Naruto then says to Sasuke, Remember, we need to hold back as we can't reveal our true strengths. We skip one hour, and Sasuke is first. Sasuke makes the fight look believable by taking a couple of hits, but eventually Sasuke wins with a chop. Next up is Naruto. Naruto does the same as Sasuke and makes it look believable, and finishes it off with a kunai to the arm. Naruto and Sasuke then take their new ranks and schedule a fight for the next day. Itachi, Shisui and Itachi also schedule a fight. We skip six months and at this point they've done several things. They've raised money slash food for the village and also they've progressed their rankings in the arena. Sasuke is 500th, Naruto is 510th, Kakashi is 523rd. Shisui is 524th, and Itachi is 493rd. They have also not picked up on much suspicious activity from the village. They seem to be acting as a normal village. Now, all five are then called by you. All five enter and say hello to you. You then says, You've been in our village for about six months now. What do you think? They all say sincerely, it's a great village. You then says, I'm going to tell you my honest girl. The five look at him with intense glares as you continues. You see, I want to make my village one of the great nations, as I believe I can fix the corrupt system. I want this village to become the sixth great nation. All the Hidson look back at him with shock. You stares at them and says, I see, you also think it's ridiculous to think that a group of rogues could form a village. Itachi then speaks up and says, you, that isn't it. We just think that we didn't think you'd have that kind of goal, as you've held so many rogues in your arms. You then continue saying, all of these rogues are not bad people. They all left their villages for not spiteful reasons. They all realise that they haven't seen one high bounty rogue and that there was a reason for that and that's because they weren't a danger to the other villagers. This is part 14 to what if Naruto got the son of Moon Seal as a child. We left off with the five Hitchison have a meeting with you and discussing his long term goals of becoming a Kage and having the sixth great nation. After the meeting with you, Naruto goes back to his room and teleports to the 5th Hokage. He hands him a scroll with a mission update and quickly teleports back. Naruto waits a few hours and then teleports straight back to Fugaku and says, All the information in there is true. We ask that we are given three more months to confirm this and also schedule a Kage summit for three months time. Goodbye. Naruto then teleports back. Three more months pass as more evidence for the goal of you being true is brought to light. Furthermore, the five Hitchison are now the top five in the arena. From fifth to first, the order is Shisui, Itachi, Kakashi, Sasuke, then Naruto. All five had also done this without the use of the Shrine Gun. Naruto then teleports to the leaf where the five Kage summit has been held. Naruto then tells Fugaku he will explain what he is thinking. Naruto begins, you've all kindly assembled here today and I will thank you. What I want to discuss is very important and depending on your answers it will mould the future of the shinobi world. What I'm proposing here is a big change and that change is a sixth great nation. All the Kage, apart from Fugaku, are shocked. And they all voice their separate opinions. 
Naruto then raises his voice, saying, For the past nine months, I've been on an S rank mission infiltrating a village. That's a rogue country. It wants to become a great nation and to cooperate with the other five nations. However, there has been hints that they may attack a nation to show that they can be powerful. Therefore, I would like you to sign this scroll to acknowledge the village hidden in the shadows as a new great nation. A lot of bickering and arguments go on, but in the end, they all sign the treaty. Naruto then goes into Yu's office. Yu is happy to see him, and Naruto has grown to like Yu as well. Naruto then says to Yu, Yu, I have something of extreme value that you may want. Naruto hands the scroll over to Yu. Gradually, Yu begins to get more and more happy as he realises what's in his hands. But then, out of nowhere, Yu's expressions change. This is because he realises that they infiltrated their village. Yu then shouts at Naruto, How dare you infiltrate my village, as he throws a giant punch at Naruto. Naruto, breaking the seal on his neck, catches this punch easily with one hand. Naruto then flexes his chakra a little bit, and it scares Yu, who stands down. Yu then apologises profusely. Naruto then says to Yu, Yu, I'm sorry, but I infiltrated your village as the great nations thought you may be a threat. I was to report what was going on in this place and what the goal of the leader is. After evaluating this, I've come to the conclusion that you've shown much value that you could bring to the shinobi world. Thus, if you sign this scroll, you shall become the sixth kage, the Yurito kage. Thus, instating the village hidden in the shadows, the sixth great nation. Yu then thinks this over and replies to Naruto, I'm sorry for attacking you. It's just you infiltrated my precious village. I was angry, but I realized that you did this for my village as much as you did it for yours. I thank you. Naruto then shakes Yu's hand and says, one day I'll attend the Kage summit as the Hokage and I'll see you there. Yu nods and smiles. This brings an end to the sixth great nation arc. We skip three months to Naruto getting married to Hinata. The wedding goes similar to in canon. The difference being that Jiraiya attends Naruto's father and Yu is also there to congratulate Naruto. Furthermore, Neji is also still alive and before the wedding, he asks Naruto for a little spot Neji doesn't understand the immense power that Naruto possesses. Hinata immediately jumps in, stopping Neji, as she knows that Naruto could accidentally kill him with one punch. Neji then says, Hinata, why are you stopping this fight? Naruto then just says to Neji, come with me, I'll show you why. Naruto then opens up a portal to another dimension. Naruto then says to Neji, see this mountain? Neji replies, yes. Naruto then continues saying, damage it as much as you can, I don't care how many attacks. Neji, who had the extra years of training, does the most powerful jutsu in his arsenal, the 64 palm god fist, as he makes a giant crater in the side of the mountain. This is about the size of what, say, Shippuden Naruto's Rasen Shuriken could have made. Neji then smokes, telling Naruto, I've got something quite powerful, you shouldn't take me so lightly. Naruto then looks at Neji with a confused face telling Neji, I meant use your strongest attack. Neji gets angry, telling Naruto that was his strongest jutsu. Neji then shouts at Naruto, look at how much I damaged. I did this huge crater, I put it in the mountain. If you are so strong, do it better then. Naruto then, without saying anything, just slashes his hand down with minimal effort and he slashes the mountain cut in, and cuts it in two, as well as the ground. As far as Neji could see with the Byakugan, the ground was split. Neji just formed a shocked expression and says, Naruto, I am truly glad that you are marrying Hinata. You are incredible. Naruto thanks him as they head back. When they head back, Sasuke is there with Sakura. Naruto greets him, asking Sasuke how he's been, as he went off and trained for the past three months. Sasuke tells Naruto he's been doing good. Sakura hands Hinata 
some money and a card as a wedding gift, and Hinata tells Sakura that she didn't have to give him, give her that much. Sakura said it was nothing, and to not worry about it. Sakura then says to Sasuke, you got a gift for Naruto, didn't you? Sasuke turns to Naruto, and Sasuke says, my gift is after this is all over, we can have one, a one-on-one -on -one spa. Sakura then hits Sasuke and says, seriously, that's not even a gift. Naruto then tells Sakura to calm down and says it's a great gift and he will be sure to treasure it. The rest of the wedding plays out the same, just with some more people present. A week passes and Naruto and Sasuke are in a new dimension, getting prepared for a spa. Unfortunately for Sasuke, he doesn't know that Naruto has been training 5,000 fold with the Shadow Clones every day. Naruto is now reaching places that are unreachable for most. Sasuke is about 10 times stronger than his adult self, but Naruto is 15 times stronger than Sasuke's adult self in base, with a dual base Sharingan. And full power, Naruto is 6 times stronger than that. You see Sasuke is only trained by himself for the past year, and Naruto has trained 5,000 times that with the use of Shadow Clones, making him much stronger. However, to counterbalance this, stronger villains will come. Anyways, the battle begins. Sasuke goes all out from the start. Naruto, in base with no Sharingan, starts. Naruto is picking up a decent fight and is landing a couple of decent hits. However, Sasuke isn't hitting Naruto. Sasuke then hits Naruto with his Susanoo blade and it slams Naruto into the ground. Naruto then realises that he's losing the fight and he jumps up, spin kicks Sasuke's Susanoo smashing into the ground and activates his base Shining Gun. Naruto then uses a water star great tsunami. This smashes Sasuke back into the ground. Sasuke then deactivates his Susanoo and speeds towards Naruto. They're almost even in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but then Sasuke begins to change the tide of the battle, landing a big kick onto Naruto, which makes him slide 50 meters to the left. Naruto then decides that he needs to get serious. Naruto then proceeds to speed around Sasuke, who swings his leg backwards, which Naruto responds to by dodging and sending an insanely strong kick into Sasuke. This renders him unable to battle. Sasuke and Naruto shake hands and laugh together as it was a good battle. Not in terms of strength, as it was obvious who was superior, but in terms of enjoyability. We skip another three months, and the new generation is born. This being Boruto, Sorada, and Mitsuki is created as well, as well as all the other Boruto characters that I couldn't give a shit about. Now, to fix Boruto, this series is now going to be called uh, Naruto Shippuden 2, as I really don't like Boruto. To make everything make more sense, Boruto has to be back again, and he isn't given any bullshit Zenkai boosts. Now, due to the Earth having way more chakra than it should, the Otsutsuki discover it way sooner, and the first members that arrive two years later are Aiko Otsutsuki, Kanagami Otsutsuki, and Kito Otsutsuki. These are all around the same level of strength as fused Momoshiki. Naruto then says to Sasuke, you ready Sasuke? Sasuke says, any time. Naruto then opens up a portal into another time space, which he kicks the other Otsutsuki into. Naruto and Sasuke then follow in quick pursuit. Inside Naruto's subconscious, Naruto asks the tailed beasts if they're ready to let loose. They all say, yeah, excitedly, as they begin to get ready infusing as much chakra as they possibly can. Naruto then activates his white cloak and is 
this is the white Biju cloak as he stacks Sage of Six Paths mode on top of that, as well as his Monkey Akira Sharingan and Renegon. Sasuke sits back as he realizes that he could get hurt from being near Naruto when he goes all out. Sasuke slightly smokes to himself, thinking he's really something that Naruto. The three Otsutsuki feel shivers down their spines as they can't even speak in the presence of Naruto. Kanagami Otsutsuki then gathers up the strength to absorb the other two Otsutsuki. Still, this is fodder compared to Naruto now. Kanagami then rushes at Naruto, throwing a flurry of punches and kicks and not being able to land a single shot. Naruto then flicks him on the head, sending him thousands of meters back. Naruto then says, it's showtime. Naruto then full speed flashes by Kanagami, launching a kick into his side, breaking all the bones in his left side of the body. Naruto then speeds towards Kanagami once again, appearing in front of him before grabbing his head and smashing it into the ground. Kanagami then stands up, trying to fight against a man who has the power of God amongst gods. Naruto then activates Boil Release as he punches the air, but the sheer wind pressure renders Kanagami on death's door as he is imprinted into the surface of the planet. Naruto then feels refreshed after this, and so do the tailed beasts as they have been able to let loose. Sasuke then walks over to Kanagami, turning him into a chakra fruit before handing it to Naruto. Sasuke then says to Naruto, next fight is mine, okay? Naruto then smiles and says to Sasuke, of course. Naruto then chops the chakra fruit in half and gives half to Sasuke. Sasuke then gains quite a bit of strength. Naruto then cuts in half again and eats a quarter and keeps the quarter for another time. This is part 15 to what if Naruto got the sun and moon seal as a child. We left off with Naruto absolutely destroying Kanagami Otsutsuki and powering up with Sasuke. We skip to Boruto the movie. Naruto and Sasuke have picked up a way to copy Kekagenkai, although it isn't to the point of perfection. In this timeline, Naruto has trained Boruto. Therefore, Boruto can use his Byakugan and is about the strength of 50% of Curse Mark II Sasuke. Therefore, when he fights Shikida, he beats him without the ninja tools relatively easily. And unlike in canon, Naruto goes down and Naruto and Boruto share a wholesome fist bump. This is when Momoshiki appears. Momoshiki comes down and kicks Naruto like in canon, however, he doesn't budge. Naruto then roundhouse kicks Momoshiki into a wall. Then Momoshiki takes chakra pills and is ready to release the massive tailed beast bomb. However, Kakashi just calmly's away this tailed beast bomb. The five Kage are fighting Urashiki and getting destroyed. However, Fugaku and Kakashi appear and then the fight evens out with them slightly overwhelming Urashiki. The Otsutsuki then decide to retreat, however Naruto decides to follow in quick pursuit along with everyone else. Naruto and Sasuke decide to sit back and watch a 9v3 as Urashiki is also fighting in this fight. The Otsutsuki are clearly losing until Momoshiki absorbs Kinshiki and then four Kage get knocked out. Momoshiki then absorbs Urashiki and everyone but Naruto, Sasuke and Boruto get knocked out. Naruto then looks at Sasuke and tells him that he's holding up his end of the promise and will let him deal with this one. Sasuke then powers up to fight triple fused Momoshiki. Boruto is concerned for Sasuke and says that the enemy is strong and Naruto should go help him out. Naruto replies to Boruto telling him Sasuke is a strong guy and these enemies aren't much to either of us. However, it will allow us to go all out. Boruto then back turns to Naruto and says, So Sasuke is as strong as you? Sasuke, who hasn't begun the fight yet, says to Boruto, No, it's not even close. 
If Naruto goes all out, I don't think there's a person in this universe that can beat him. Naruto rubs his head and says, oh, you didn't really need to say all that. Sasuke then says that he's going about 50% and he then rushes towards Momoshiki. For 10 minutes, they're fighting. Momoshiki says, how can a human be so strong? Sasuke then looks at him and says, strong? Oh, I'm only warming up. I'm only using about 50% of my power. Sasuke then powers up and blitzes Momoshiki, absolutely destroying him and within 5 seconds of Sasuke powering up, he is lying on the ground on death's door. Momoshiki then decides to bestow karma onto Boruto. Boruto then asks Naruto if he can see his full power. Naruto says, sorry Boruto, it's a little dangerous. Boruto replies saying, dad just show me your strongest jutsu. Naruto gives in and performs hand seals for God's wrath. He powers up to the max and incinerates the planet beside him. Boruto is in shock. Naruto then says to Boruto, you see this jutsu, it is so dangerous that if used in the wrong hands, it could destroy the world. I was careless when I created this jutsu. Boruto just looks shocked, speechless in fact. Naruto then says he will teach him it one day, however, that's only when he matures. We skip to Konohamaru, Boruto, Sarada and Mitsuki bringing Kawaki back to the village. In this timeline, Konohamaru is 2.5 times stronger than his usual self, so he does a good job fighting Kashin Koji, but in the end he couldn't win. Everything goes the same as in canon and Kawaki tried to escape multiple times. We then cut to when they're in the house and Kawaki tries to escape. Naruto then says to Kawaki, you can't escape me now, but what about this time as he powers up to his full cloak Susano Aura with Mangeki Sharingan and Rinnegan. This scares Kawaki so much that he collapses and apologizes, stuttering out the words, forgive me. Naruto then deactivates everything and says, Kawaki, listen, I didn't mean to scare you. I just can't let you get into the enemy's hands, okay? Kawaki nods. Naruto then decides that he's going to make Kawaki his student and teaches him about living and how to be a ninja. We cut to when Delta appears when they're all training. Naruto is really annoyed as Delta tried to shoot his daughter Himawari. Naruto then blitzes towards Delta and Roundhouse kicks her in the face, blowing off her head. A bit of time passes when Jigen appears and tries to take away Kawaki. Naruto quickly creates a portal and kicks Jigen into it. He then unsuppresses himself, releasing his full base power. This makes Jigen scared as he thinks that Naruto is a threat. He then takes the karma away from Kawaki and goes 100%. But still, as 100%, he's only 20% of Naruto. Naruto says, that's your full power, how disappointing, as he activates all of his strong powers and this leaves Jigen in fear, or Ishiki I should be saying. Ishiki then gives up and says to Naruto, my clan's way is to pass down our power, I see you worthy of my power. That man over there can turn people into chakra fruits, Jigen points to Sasuke. Do whatever you wish with my power. Naruto just says, I'm honored. However, how do you get rid of karma? Ishiki explains and goes over to Boruto, extracting fruit from Momoshiki. Naruto then 
get Sasuke to absorb Jigen into a chakra fruit. Naruto perfectly cuts Ishiki's fruit in half and gives half to Boruto and half to Kawaki. He then cuts Momoshiki's fruit into four quarters, him and Sasuke sharing a quarter. He gives the other two quarters to the five Kage. One week later, Naruto and Sasuke ask the Kage for permission to go against the Otsuzuki as they are becoming more and more of a threat. All the Kage say that's fine as they begin their hunt. A while passes when they suddenly stumble upon a branch hideout for the Otsuzuki. Naruto uses Sage of Six Paths mode and senses a hundred members. Naruto explains that it will be dangerous if they fuse. So Naruto tells Sasuke whoever eliminates the most wins. Ready? Go. They then blitz around the hideout, easily destroying these single Otsutsuki because they haven't fused. In the end Naruto beats 61 and Sasuke beats 39. Sasuke turns all of them into chakra fruits and they eat all of the chakra fruits, Sasuke having 39 and Naruto having 61. Then they stumble upon a second branch two months later. Naruto tells Sasuke that he's got this and he wants them all to fuse as he wants to test his power. Sasuke says, you idiot, you can't take this many. Naruto says, of course I can, maybe. But then Naruto but then Naruto powers up and all the Otsutsuki fuse as they notice that this is a huge threat and they may not be able to take it without it. However, it is obvious as the fight begins that Naruto is stronger. Naruto makes quick work of this and tells Sasuke to turn this Otsutsuki member into a chakra fruit. After one year away from Earth, Sasuke and Naruto have grown into beings that are so strong that no one could stand up to them, or so they thought. Sasuke is 25 times stronger than Naruto in the Jigen fight, and Naruto is 5 times stronger than that. They finally find the last Otsutsuki member. However, this is the Otsutsuki King, Gurren. The Otsutsuki King, Gurren, confronts them and has power that rivals Naruto and Sasuke's together. Gurren rushes at Naruto, sensing incredible power and releases a strong jutsu upon him. Naruto blocks this, but it knocks him back. Sasuke then uses a fire style attack, hitting Gurren and knocking him back. Naruto then rushes behind Gurren and hammer kicks him into the ground, which Gurren quickly reacts to by using his hands to parry. Gurren then activates his godly Otosuki avatar. Naruto activates his perfect Susana and combines it with Sasuke's. Naruto then activates his white cloak and begins to slash many times at Gurren. They then defuse as they use their avatars in different ways. Sasuke then cuts off Gurren's arm as Naruto cuts off the other. Sasuke then, contains, Sasuke then continues to slash at Gurren when Naruto uses Chibaku Tensei to trap Gurren. Naruto then uses his brand new Jutsu, Five Style God Slayer. This causes the Chibaku Tensei to be sliced in two like butter along with Gurren. Sasuke then uses his ability to turn things into chakra and turns Gurren into a giant chakra fruit. Sasuke and Naruto then transport themselves to another dimension. They then find their way back to Earth, but Sasuke wants one final fight with Naruto. Naruto agrees with this, however, it is requested that they record this battle. So, the battle is being broadcasted live. They teleport to another dimension, and their battle begins.
Naruto and Sasuke begin fighting in base. Naruto is blatantly superior as Sasuke activates his Mangekyo Sharingan. Sasuke then uses his base Rinnegan as well before running at Naruto. However, Naruto grabs Sasuke's arm and judo slams it into the ground. Naruto then activates his base Sharingan as Sasuke activates his Susano Aura. Sasuke then rushes at Naruto, who begins to struggle. So Naruto then activates his Mangekyo Sharingan and Rinnegan with Tomoe. Naruto then uses Body Flicker to the point where Sasuke can't even see his movements. Naruto is suddenly behind him and uses Wind Style Gale Palm to knock Sasuke away. The difference in power is suddenly showing as Sasuke activates his perfect Susano with Avatar inside. Naruto then powers up to his perfect Susano with his Avatar inside as he clashes swords with Sasuke. However, Naruto is blatantly stronger as he is two times stronger than Gurren now, with Sasuke only being 95% of Gurren. Sasuke then uses his final move as he believes this is the only way he may be able to defeat Naruto. Indra's arrow. This attack is 1000 times stronger than the one in canon. However, Naruto uses his brand new jutsu, Seven Style God Slayer. This is a combination of all elements and yin and yang release. Boruto in the Hidden Leaf is rooting for Sasuke as he believes Sasuke could beat Naruto. Naruto then quickly teleports to Sasuke and punches him, then releasing his jutsu. Sasuke manages to turn around in time, releasing his as well. However, Naruto's jutsu is just way too powerful. It incinerates Indra's arrow and it hits Sasuke. However, Naruto teleports to Sasuke once again and pulls him out of the way as he is already knocked out. Kawaki, back in the leaf, says it was obvious Naruto was going to win. Boruto then scowls and admits he was wrong after watching Naruto easily destroy Sasuke. This concludes the end of What If Naruto Got the Sun and Moon Seal as a child. I hope you enjoyed this series, and I will now be starting three new What Ifs. What if Naruto had the Ten Tails? What if Naruto got the Tensei Gun? And what if Naruto became a kid again? If you enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any videos.